ओके in in sugama we were discussing something it was a very complex idea of poor pakshi L- last time in the last class we just went a little fast uh, i told you that we will discuss this later in the next class now also i didn't have time <laughs> so because th- this class is such a thing always disturbance uh, some some vigna comes and i couldn't do that again it was a tight schedule uh, anyway i'll try as best as i can see this is always problem i don't know how people do it is creating a problem to me just a minute it falls down i have to balance like a circus see this tie i have to balance like circus how to balance each time it falls oh. <clears throat> i hope i don't have to do circus now ओके इन सुगमा इज इट विजिबल वाई दिस आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस स्टैंड एवरीथिंग इज ए प्रॉब्लम हाँ नाउ इट इज ओके ओके हाँ पूर्व पक्षी पूर्व पक्षी मीन्स विवरणकार पंचपादिक विवरण वीनो सो विवरणकार एक्सप्लेन अन्ोन्य अध्यास संवाड डिफरेंटली सो ऐल जस्ट रीड औट वन अगेन एंड सी स्वामीजी रेफ्यूटेशन ऑफ इट ओके प्रकार अत्र केचि प्रकारातरेण अन्ोन्य अध्यास समर्थय सम पीपल एक्सप्लेन this mutual superimposition differently how they explain like this here swami ji is quoting verbatim vivaranakara's uh, statements he is quoting here his text ekatara adhyase kila anyatarasya samanya vabhaso anyatarasya eva vishesha vabhasasya syat atra cha uh, okay first point the pura pakshi says is in adhyasa adhisthana in adhyasa adhisthana uh, one should be vaguely visible another will be strikingly visible samanya vishesha first point pura pakshi says is samanya and vishesha one is visible samanya another is visible visheshataya vishesha means specifically clearly strikingly one is vaguely visible another is strikingly visible ekatara adhyase kila anyatarasya samanya vabhaso anyatarasya eva vishesha vabhasasya cha this is what pura pakshi says that means he divides adhisthana adhyas adhyasta as samanya and vishesha okay atra tu chijjada roopena dvayorapi vishesha vabhaso dvayorapi adhyasam gamayati ha ah. but here chaitanyam and jada jada and chaitanyam both of them are conspicuously strikingly visible both are conspicuously visheshava bhasa means what conspicuously are 
strikingly visible. Therefore, both Chaitanyam is visible conspicuously and, and Jadam also. Therefore, Atratu Chijjada Rupena Dvayorapi Visheshava Bhaso Dvayorapi Adhyasangamayati. When both are strikingly visible, then we have to say both of them are Adhyasta. It should be, that uh, Vivaranakara says, it should be, but Adhyase Visheshava Bhasasya Adhyastamanata Prayuktatvat. But he says, a Samanya will be Adhishtana. What is conspicuously visible is Adhyasta. What is vaguely seen is Adhishtana. What is clearly visible is Adhyasta. This should be, he is making a condition like this for himself. Okay. He is making a condition and according to that condition, he is explaining Adhyasa. This is, this is Vivaranakaras, not Swamiji's. Okay. He is putting a condition. That in Adhyasa Adhishtana, I repeat these things, Adhy Adhyasta should be very clearly, strikingly, conspicuously visible. Adhishtana should be vague, vaguely visible. He is using in Sanskrit Samanya and Visesha. Okay. What is Samanyataya visible is Adhishtana. What is Visheshataya visible is Adhyasta. This is what he makes a role. After making a role, when you look at the, the present condition of Chaitanyam and Atma, Anatma, Atma Anatma, which is Chaitanyam and Jada, both are equally conspicuously present, then how do you explain? See, he put a rule, he made a rule that Adhishtana should be vaguely perceived, Adhyastha should be conspicuously perceived. Okay, Samanya and Visesha. Once he made a rule, but the actual experience is going against his rule. <laughs> the rule which he himself made, the actual experience is going against his rule. Therefore, he is trying to explain that experience in different way. You see, first he makes a rule against experience. <laughs> And if, if you, when you are finding the experience different from your role, uh, against your role, you have to explain this experience differently. Differently means what? The very rule you have made is not followed in this adhyasa. That means you are, this is a very strange thing to say. Bah. See, any rule, what is a rule? Let us see what is a rule. Rule means if you find a given thing commonly present everywhere, that's what we call it a rule. If you find a particular phenomena only in one time or one place, we call it as a rare event. And if you find a particular feature commonly in many places, then you call it as a general rule. What is commonly seen, what is generalized is called a rule. What is rule? A generalized feature. What is commonly visible in all, in all conditions, in all, all means broadly call, broadly, maybe few exceptions. Leaving out few exceptions, what you find commonly, generally everywhere, we call it rule. That's what rule means. Now, in this experience of mutual adhyasa, uh, is very peculiar. Now, he made a rule himself that Adhyastha should be visible conspicuously, Visheshataya. Visheshataya means strikingly, conspicuously. And Adhishtana should be vaguely seen, not clearly, not conspicuously. He made a rule which is against the very experience of Adhyasa. This is very strange. Uh, that's that's why I called it strange because any rule should be made based upon the experience. Now he says he made a rule first and he says the real experience of Adhyasa is not following the rule. He makes a rule. I don't know on what basis did he make a rule. This is where we have to question. He made a rule 
and finds this adhyasa not following the rule which he himself made. Therefore, this experience is trying to explain differently. Why? In fact, all rules should be made based upon the experience. The experience itself shows that Atma and Atma both are strikingly visible. He says, Atma is strikingly visible, Anatma is strikingly visible, both are strikingly, both are Visheshataya visible. Then, take it them as they are. Go by the experience. Now, Pura Pakshi doesn't go by experience. He makes a rule on his own against the experience. And when the experience is, is not following his own rule, he tries to explain that experience differently. Different from his own rule. This is the main crux of Pura Pakshi. Siddhanta later dismisses all these rules and etc. unnecessary. Why do you make a rule against your experience? Take the experience as it is, it is over. It is over. See, all rules ultimately boil down to experience alone. Experience is the final determinant, final criterion. This is what Shankara's Vedanta, this is what Satchidanandendra Swamiji's Vedanta. You don't speculate. It must be like this, it may be like this, it should be like this, but it is unfortunately not like that. No, this kind of a talking is, not, is maybe a philosophy, Western philosophy, but not Indian Vedanta. Okay? We just take the, how the experience is and just take it as it is. Trying to understand the experience as it is, is Vedanta. Not speculating, not trying to give a theoretical explanation, uh, imaginary explanation to what you find is a speculation. It is a Western philosophy, not Vedanta. Okay? This is the main principle we have to derive from this discussion. It is not directly stated, but I am deriving from this, from this discussion. Even the discussion is not complete, it is going on. But uh, in, in, the, in the beginning two statements alone, uh, in the first two statements alone, we are deriving the conclusion from, because how he is approaching. His very approach is, there is something mistake in his very, very approach. So, any philosophy is inquiry, understanding the facts. Uh, fa the, the situation, the experiences get mixed up. This much we can say. Experiences get mixed up. Get mixed up means experiences don't get mixed up. Our understanding gets mixed up. The things are not clear. We are unable to discriminate, distinguish the things as they are. From a distance, it is like the sky is above, earth is down. But from a distance, you watch the sky long away kilometers, a number of kilometers away, you see in an open place, sky is coming down and touching the earth. Don't you see that? Earth is going and trying to touch the sky. Sky is coming down. Sky is coming down. Earth is going up and both of them come and touch at a certain point. So here, actual experience, experience means this is what our eyes see. This is what our uh, I see, you perceive that the earth, sky is coming down and touching the earth. Okay. The sky and earth mix up, come together, join. So, like this, in our experiences, the two things which are different look mixed up. This mixing up is in our understanding, in our perception. We perceive them to be together as one. But if you walk around, if you walk, if you, if you travel and try to see the meeting point of the sky and the earth, you will never come across directly. I used to think in my childhood, probably everybody thinks, I shall walk. One day I will walk on and on and on and on and see the place where the sky has come down and touching the earth. I, will, I want to touch that sky because it is touching the earth. I can go and touch the sky. Ah, such a blue and nice, see, it is looking very tender sky, blue and nice and smooth it looks. Sky looks blue, smooth, tender, beautiful it looks, isn't it? I thought that we, I would walk number of kilometers, maybe 5 or 7 kilometers, go, once I, once I grow up as a childhood, child I used to think when I grow up, I will go and touch the sky. But as I grew up and then we had to travel to some place, 
ஐ ஐ ட்ராவல் மோர் ஐ ட்ராவல் மோர் வி வாக் மோர் த ஸ்கை லுக்ஸ் சீம் டு பி கோயிங் அவே த ஸ் த ஹொரைசன் வேர் த ஸ்கை டச்சஸ் த அர்த் சீம்ஸ் டு பி மூவிங் மூவிங் ஃபார்வர்ட் மோர் யூ வாக் மோர் மூவிங் ஃபார்வர்ட் மோர் யூ வாக் மோர் மூவிங் ஃபார்வர்ட் த ப்ளேஸ் வேர் த ஸ்கை அண்ட் அர்த் டச் நெவர் சீம் டு கம் டு அஸ் வி நெவர் சீம் டு ரீச் தட் ப்ளேஸ் இட் ஆல்வேஸ் எலூட்ஸ் அஸ் நோ வாட் யூ சே தட் so i am giving this example because when the two things appear to be mixed up in our mind so only we have to distinguish them sky as a sky earth as an earth there is no mixing up that's all we need to do okay viveka viveka means discriminating distinguishing what appear to be mixed up if they are really mixed up then separating becomes difficult but if they are got mixed up in my understanding in my perception they are mixed up but in reality they are not mixed up see in my perception if they are mixed up but in reality they stand separate then the problem is not with the facts the problem is with my mind with my understanding alone in my understanding they get mixed up not in reality therefore the correction is required in your understanding alone in my mind is get mixing them up not the facts the reality the reality the re- two real things are not mixed up they stand separate by mind is mixing up okay similarly atma anatma are separate they don't mix up but my mind is mixing up i see atma as anatma anatma as atma this is called anyonya adhyasa a mutually mixing up consciousness as a jadam and jadam as consciousness consciousness appearing as a mind sense organs and the body and body's jadatvam is imposed upon the consciousness okay that means consciousness looks individualized okay consciousness looks individualized and body looks to be conscious okay body sense organs and mind looks like conscious mind looks as a consciousness isn't it mind is imbued with consciousness sense organs are imbued with consciousness a thought is imbued with consciousness and the body also imbues it with consciousness we feel that there is consciousness in the body okay that means consciousness is imposed upon the body when consciousness is imposed upon the body consciousness is individualized is located consciousness which is non individual it is impersonal consciousness by its very nature is impersonal it looks individualized and individual things which are visible to our mind and sense organs they appear to be con- become conscious so these two mixing up of consciousness and unconscious element like insentient sentiency and insentient things they seem to be mixed up this mixing up vedanta says shankaracharya says this mixing up is only in your mind in reality they are not mixed up all that we need to do is correct your thinking distinguish them in your mind in reality they are already separate they never get mixed up they are already separate Ah, this is the point to be understood. Now, in mixing up is called technically adhyasa. Adhyasa means mixing up. Now, Purupa, this, this Vivaranakara, I have to explain because it is a technical point. Technical in the sense of somebody's speculation against Anubhava. If you go by your Anubhava, it is easy to understand. That's why Shankaracharya or Satchidan Nendra Swamiji, when they teach vedanta it becomes easier because they talk directly of experience it is in everybody's life and we can just directly face it and understand it becomes easy when somebody starts speculating trying to give an imaginary explanation and use logic for it then it becomes a complex because it becomes a theory a theory doesn't follow the anubhava partly follows partly doesn't follow the theory which they speculate partly follows your experience partly doesn't follow you give a rule you explain a theory you give it create a theory but that theory 
is not totally following the experience therefore it goes wrong elsewhere then you have to give another explanation then that explanation doesn't fit fit in with the experience again you have to give another explanation this goes on endlessly this is the confusion that's what so we are trying to understand the prevalent vedanta panchapadika vivarana they are the prevalent vedanta they theorize certain experiences instead of helping you to inquire and understand observe examine and understand instead of examining and understanding they the very examination involves a speculation and creating a theory you try to explain logically ignoring the anubhava and when it goes against the anubhava you explain the anubhava again differently first you make an incomplete theory first you make a rule or a theory which is incomplete incomplete in the sense it is not it is not exactly in keeping with anubhava that theory is not able to explain the anubhava you create a theory based upon partial experience and don't take the experience completely okay when you are when you are then then naturally the theory is based upon incomplete experience it won't be able to explain the experience completely experience looks different from the rule you made the theory you made now to understand the experience you create another theory this is the problem first you make a rule against the experience ignoring the experience when the experience is not fitting with your theory this experience you try to explain with another theory this is the problem okay now you understand the basic idea otherwise if i keep on repeating repeating you get bored the basic mistake is this if you keep this much in view and listen to what i am going to say the vivaranakara is going to say you understand easily where he is going wrong where we are going wrong so examination requires unprejudiced mind why do you make theories now next question all this is not there in the book which i am explaining why do we make a theories against the experience why can't we directly examine the experience directly can't we examine the experience directly in fact they claim and they intend to do they claim to do and they try to do see they claim to do intend to do ex- intend to examine the facts they claim to examine the facts they try to examine the facts ultimately end up with theories <laughs> see this experience they claim that we are examining the facts ha huh? they they the int- intention also is sincerely they want to understand the facts and they want to try to understand the facts ultimately end up in ex- making theories rather than facing the fact as they are shankaracharya what did sachidanand swami ji do he, he did all the thing is only this much face the facts as they are don't speculate don't imagine don't create theories we don't need theories go directly experience the experience itself reveals face it pay attention to it the experience itself reveals its nature we are obs- observing examining not explaining see observing examining and as a result of examination the facts comes out comes out on its own it it comes to be perceived it comes to be understood as it is that's what is vedanta vedanta is tatva vichara vedanta is not giving theories explanations logical explanations and giving theories okay that becomes a western philosophy even some of the indians also do partly but vedanta is observation examination understanding distinguishing the thing as it is atma is atma anatma is anatma anatma is kalpita atma is svatasiddha that's all see it as it is ha huh? how simple how straight how beautiful it is if it is so simple if vedanta is so simple and straight then why we are unable to understand why are we unable to understand why do we why do we complicate the situation one is the human weaknesses human tendency to imagine rather than see as it is imagine see imagines rather than see simple facts are easier to understand 
But if you take partial facts and try to explain, try to give a theory and logic, you are imagining them. This once you imagine, then another can imagine another way. Somebody can imagine some 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 other way. Another can imagine another way. Then it becomes complex. Then out of these imaginations, out of these several theories, whose theory is correct? Each one defends his own theory. Each one uses his own logic, and he says he alone is correct. People say Abba Vedanta is difficult. It it is not difficult. It is made difficult. <laughs> Vedanta is itself not difficult. It is made difficult. Now you understand the point. It is made difficult. Why? Because of human weakness to imagine. Human nature is whatever imagination, imagination. Some people, illiterate people, are incapable of imagining. But I tell you. i say people are more capable of imagining rather than observation see observation is one thing observation examination is one imagination and speculation is another but people are more capable of imagining speculation rather than observing and examining okay vedanta requires a simple heart you see shankaracharya is a great not for his wild imagination not for his speculation but for his straight observation and examination straight observe observe the fact they are very subtle you require a subtle mind unprejudiced mind to see it as it is just to see that's all see it face it as it is so this is what shankara's greatness is we also become equal to him equal to means at least we learn his mind we also become unprejudiced set aside your imagination wild imaginations speculation just to face the facts as they are just to face the fact pa how beautiful it is resist control the purity of antakarana is resist this unnecessary imagination imaginations what is prejudice somebody planted some idea in you before watching before examining before watching the fact as it is we carry prior opinion about it in kannada there is an expression purva agraha they call it purva anugraha purva agraha purva vritti that means you prior idea prejudice in fact the prejudice means the same thing prejudging is called prejudice pre judgments you have got a purva agraha you have an idea about it before you watch observe examine you already have an idea about it this idea either you develop on your own or you picked up or somebody planted in your mind somebody planted in your mind or you yourself imagined developed or you are carrying somehow but whatever the reason is if you carry some pre opinion prior concept about it before you observe you already have an opinion about it an idea about it. this prevents this interferes this creates a problem you start making a theory start giving an explanation the the maturity of a person the maturity of a person depends upon not allowing your prior conclusions to interfere okay that's why some people you say abba don't tell me that if before you watch the film before you read a novel or a book if somebody says something that already puts a concept in you puts an idea in you and it interferes in watching the thing some people say oh swami ji you don't tell me if you tell like this if you tell something before when i am directly facing it your idea comes and interferes swami ji don't tell me some people say i told this is only an imagination don't allow it to interfere no they can't do that they say you better not to listen see very few people are capable of listening and setting it aside and not allowing it to interfere that requires a lot of maturity maturity means anasakti detachment a lot of vairagya you require vairagya is not in a physical sense vairagya in your intellect in your ideas in your relationship even after knowing that some idea some thought see that's why this media does it they put already some idea in you that's why our courts say that hey what is that 
it is a sub jodi is nobody should discuss society should not discuss i use it to wonder why why the judges prevent people from discussing the topic they say if the people discuss it becomes a common idea on tvs and newspapers everywhere it spreads it okay let it spread what happen if it spreads everywhere what happen the judge also reads it that idea it may be put in his mind if the idea is put in his mind when he is watching the case that interferes the idea planted by the media planted by the general public it planted in the mind of a judge comes and interferes it prejudices a person therefore the judges they are all human beings they have got their own prejudices they have got their own weaknesses it might prejudice their mind therefore they they ban all discussion publicly they say nobody should discuss a topic which is under the consideration of court under the consideration of the court don't discuss that means what even common man also when somebody tries to say i don't know you have to go and see supposing something like this you are going to see that okay go and see that but before you see i have some idea what i heard what i imagine i'll tell you something you listen to this thing probably it is like this probably like this probably like this the other person listens to it and already planted the idea is planted in him before he watches the idea is planted in him but some people little more intelligent people they say oh come on don't tell me don't tell me if i listen to you it conditions my mind it 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 makes me prejudiced uh, when i am watching it please don't tell me i don't want to listen please don't tell me please don't tell me they want to run away <laughs> the judges also do the same thing what do they say oh no discussion no discussion it is sub judges no discussion these are all human weaknesses aren't they but real then who is a really great mature person the most mature person have you ever seen him okay we have whether we have seen or not but i explained to him even if you listen about something you listen and ready capable of setting it aside while directly watching it while directly watching a thing even if you have heard about most reliable person whatever you have heard about something whatever you have heard good or bad or anything everything you should be able to set aside and watch the thing as it is ha ah, that is not easy great people get prejudiced great people come under the prejudice because if you hear innocently hear some idea somebody a child tells something somebody tells something somewhere a passing remark and idea it comes and sits in your mind as you are watching it interferes ha ah, that's why this modern media is not to educate you people say oh in those days there was no education nowadays we have got lot of education we have got media tvs newspapers magazines books libraries huge libraries we build up everybody can go to school and college and study but how much prejudices theories false ideas fake news they are filling up your mind with don't we see that don't we see this how much they are filling up our mind with wrong things and ideas this really prejudices our mind brain washes our mind that's what the western media indian media is doing they trying to brain wash hindus condition hindus hindu phobia terrible hatred against hinduism and hindus uh, they distort our history they torture us killers murderers rapers and still they say blame us only we are responsible and they say oh minorities are innocent people they are blame what a terrible villains these fellows are see therefore this media education system is only to condition you brainwash you prejudice you not to enlighten you ha huh? do you see any, any any enlightenment in anywhere in, the, in this world more confusion more more filling up your mind with brain uh, with all false ideas not one idea too many ideas so that you thoroughly confuse each person you see the modern fellow each person is confused because helpless the media is such the modern civilization is such we are exposed to raw false ideas hundreds of false ideas everybody is conditioned the mature person is one whatever he listens any amount of argument any amount of these things 
he can comfortably set aside and see the fact as they are. This requires a very open mind, highly open mind. Whatever I heard, I can just easily set aside. Don't allow your thoughts and books and the people's ideas touch your heart. Keep your heart like mirror. Like mirror, always fresh and open. Always, however you listen, you should be able to set aside and then do it. This requires a lot of maturity. Education doesn't mean filling up your mind with a lot of ideas. Knowing too much unnecessary, irrelevant things. And talking, he said like that, he said like that, so and so Vivekananda said like that, Aravinda said like that, Ramakrishna said like this, Ramana Marishi said like that, Shankaracharya said like that. Filling up the ideas of all others and then Western philosophy said like this and keep on repeating out, repeating all these ideas are waste of time, it is further conditioning. The real maturity, the real education is making your mind fresh and open. Never allow. Listen any amount of ideas. But listen to them as just floating ideas. Don't allow them to touch your idea. How people talk about those ideas so convincingly. They try to manipulate your mind and they talk so innocently, simply, very innocently, very sincerely. They try to... The sincerity is not sincerity. It is an apparent sincerity. It is an acting sincerity. Earlier, there used it to be advertisement. I'll give you one example. You understand how the sincerity is abused. In the modern days, you find certain advertisement. If you, if you, if if somebody, a film actor or a cricketer advertises that this is a beautiful pen and you buy it can write well. No. This is a good vegetable. This is a good medicine. They want a, nowadays, a ordinary housewife who sits at home they tell through the, they make her speak and they try to push this idea through a housewife. You think that, oh my God, she is a housewife. Not advertisement, is a natural woman like us. A man and woman like us at home, simple, innocent people. No commercial, no propagandist. They are simple, innocent people. They are talking. And you start believing it. They use this. This again is a propaganda. They make her to speak. All sincerity is exploited and abused. Now, next time, nobody will believe even the sincere people also. They are playing with the trust of the people. Nobody will be trusted hereafter. Earlier, if somebody speaks in kashaya cloth, people will trust, no, he is a non-commercial person, non-political person. He speaks sincerely because he is afraid of his papa. What he knows, he speaks it. Nowadays, somebody dresses up like sannyasi and so and so on and then talks, advertisement. People get confused. Sanyasi is talking. Probably it is true. If, if more people come in like this, then, then Sanyasi also loses respectability, loses trustworthiness. Now, they take natural human beings, non-commercial, non-political people. Also, they are using for advertisement. People are coming on TV. Now, the sincerity is under test now. The trustworthiness is also under test trustworthiness. We don't know whom to trust now. Even the kashaya clothes we can't trust because they are also becoming commercial and political. Now, earlier they say villager, illiterate villagers are trustworthy, they are innocent. Illiterate villagers also they are using for advertisement and propaganda and then telling lies. They are also becoming smart and intelligent. They can talk anything. Then you believe him and tomorrow you will get cheated. Oh my God, you cannot trust them. Then whom to trust? Earlier, you, they used to think that the children can be trusted because they are innocent. Now, they are making children also to speak for advertisement and, and propaganda. They, they bring the children and make them to abuse the Prime Minister. Do children, can, can children understand? Children of 5 years, 7 years old, bring the children, abuse Prime Minister. Now, children, all, film, in the, you bring the children to the film and bring for advertisement. You make them to speak. You see the children? You see in some of the advertisements, some of the places, children talk. It looks, they, they, they don't look like children. They are, they, are, they are fed by people. They are tutored by some people. It is a propaganda. The children's innocence is destroyed. They are, talk, they are talking too smart, over smart, beyond their age they are talking. 
अदरवाइज चिल्ड्रन ऑफ दैट एज वुड नॉट नो दैट दैट मीन्स द इनोसेंस ऑफ द विलेजर्स द सिंप्लिसिटी सिंसियरिटी ऑफ सन्यासी इज डिस्ट्रॉइड द इनोसेंस ऑफ द विलेजर्स इज डिस्ट्रॉइड इनोसेंस ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन चिल्ड्रन इज डिस्ट्रॉइड देन नो बडी कैन बी ट्रस्टेड शास्त्रास ऑल्सो मिस इंटरप्रेटेड सी भगवद गीता एंड अदर बुक्स आर बिकमिंग कमर्शियल एनी बडी सम बडी यूज एस वेद ऑन टॉ कंपनी I feel like kicking the fellow and then putting them in jail. You use Vedanta word for your company and business. Can't you can't you leave out word Vedanta? The he is a Hindu, idiotic Hindu, vulgar Hindu. He uses the word Vedanta. You you type you want to study Vedanta. You 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 search in your Google. First Vedanta company comes. What is this? There are certain spiritual topics. non commercial non political very sincere innocent facts leave them don't commercialize them don't abuse them just leave them that's why in those days brahmana was given dakshina brahmana was not commercialized brahmana was not politicized he follows dharma he follows shastra does puja japa lives simply innocently politicians are there it is their business they hate each other they create criticize each other they invade each other they they leave it to them a brahmana a sanyasi are supposed to just to talk about the facts universal facts pertaining to human life become neither commercial nor political no other motive now they say what is this sanyasi sir simply keeping quiet how the christian missionaries are doing how the other missionaries are doing we also communists are propagating see communism islam christianity they are the biggest liars biggest propagandists who only how to malign hinduism their bhagavad gita they write they commentaries translate like max muller on the parma papatma he translated the rigveda only to destroy hinduism and we should respect our traditionally if you go by traditional even the take um, even the take the name of uh, what is his name max muller you have to wash your mouth with ganga jala because they are such papis because they are destroying the trustworthiness of people and these books are published translated come into the brought into the market and everybody started reading whole oh, mind innocence is lost the sincerity is lost people are becoming too selfish too prejudiced too controlled too manipulated minds and we don't know whom to trust these days ha huh. therefore in those days children women shudras illiterate villagers okay illiterate villagers are sincere simple people innocent they have no commercial complicated mind okay children women sanyasi brahmana this many people you leave out don't cheat them that's why stri hatya is a papa children hatya is a papa brahmana hatya is a papa because they are innocent people they are sincere they have no other motive don't commercialize them don't politicize them therefore a non political a, a person without any political motive without any commercial motive a sincere person is like a god because such persons are useful for the society because when you are in trouble you can trust them your mind becomes peaceful and relaxed no prejudice no this thing whatever they know simply they tell pa keep them preserve them don't destroy that that's why that is a papa you destroy that is a brahma hatya pataka stri hatya pataka bala hatya pataka it is a biggest papa and modern civilization is full filled with papa only their goal is only to commit papa the whole civilization tv advertisement everything is only papa filled with papa that means they destroy the very trustworthiness uh, they destroy the very credibility and we call it a civilization education everybody goes to college everybody studies everybody reads books a lot of advertisement ah oh, what an education in those days shudras were denied education women were also not much educated oh only brahmanas kept education all others are denied education now now, now what is the education doing these days now which educated man is peaceful and happy and trustworthy show me one person you show me one person which educated man is trustworthy and simple innocent and straight and dharmika arjavam we call in sanskrit ruju you show me which educated man more you are educated more polluted that fellow education is only polluting your mind 
okay it looks a deviation but certain things have to be told therefore in those days a brahmana was straight and simple and innocent he he goes by dharma and sincerely if he does a mistake he will really undergo fasting one day two days he will do fasting he will not eat he will he will he will what you call take bath dip in the uh, uh, cold water because ganga snana he has to do that is a papakshaya he believes it sincerely and does it and believes punya papa and does the dharma he even if he is cheated he will not cheat others he will not tell lies even if he is cheated he will not tell lies he will simply tell the truth and live that's all therefore that is a traditional brahmana therefore if you kill such a brahmana you are deprived of a sincere good person to the society you are depriving the society of such a good person that is a brahma hatya pataka he teaches punya papa bhagavad bhakti sincerity satyam ahimsa dharma and all that and such a person you lose it two ways of losing killing that person or polluting the person and commercializing both are equal to brahma hatya either kill the person or make him bhrashta bhrashta andre uh, pull him down from his that sincerity and make him commercialized and then and then prejudiced fellow either make him bhrashta or kill him both are equally papas modern civilization is only papa civilization most sinful civilization it is okay i am blunt modale i am telling you i am very blunt <laughs> you like you may take it if you don't like you can leave it out no, no compulsion no force i'm just pointing out if you like you can take it as if you if you are not convinced remove it leave it that's all nothing to worry you live as you like therefore the sincerity arjavam our shastra says arjavam ruju bhava ruju means straight simple sincere sincere in pramanika hrudaya in kannada we call it to chitta shuddhi in telugu we call chitta shuddhi in telugu sincerity in english pramanika pramanikatvam in kannada straight arjavam in sanskrit arjavam ruju bhava no diplomacy no commercial no cunningness no political motive no any other motive simple straight ha therefore such people don't listen that's why people say don't listen to chadi chadi means what backbiting don't listen to rumors backbiting rumors don't fill your mind with rumors this chatting rumors all this fill your mind and prejudice your mind therefore listen to the satsanga listen to the sincere people who live who has cultivated this discipline of only watching the facts and speaking the facts never spread rumors even if you listen set it aside just to forget it as you listen forget it don't spread the rumors to others ha huh. don't pollute your mind such people have to be lived therefore education means give them necessary knowledge not to not to fill their mind with all prejudices propaganda Uh, and then what you call uh, uh, too many unnecessary irrelevant ideas rumors and all this spoils your mind pollutes your mind the sincerity will be lost therefore real maturity requires a lot of vairagyam whom do you call uttama adhikari uttama adhikari is not because he is intelligent and sharp we don't need sharpness of your and intellect we don't need your extraordinary intelligence we need a detached outlook unprejudiced mind is a detached mind detached means it doesn't get carried away by rumors ideas opinions of others it wants to see the fact as they are it just an innocent heart sees the facts as they are this is the uttama adhikari this is the mature mind okay maturity intelligent person vedanta vicharaka doesn't mean Uh, filled his mind with a lot of ideas lot of speculation lot of imagination lot of theories that is a more ashuddha mind it is an impure mind more educated more you become impure unfit for vedanta i tell you more you are educated more you are unfit for vedanta then what is you require a detached mind even if you listen even if you listen to the rumors 
should be able to set aside and look at the facts as they are. Are we capable? Are we capable? That makes us really simple people. That is vairagyam. That is maturity. That is uttamadikaritvam. That makes you uttamadikari. That makes you really good Vedantin. Anubhava, just to face straight away. Okay? Time is up. I have taken a lot of time in this point, in discussing this point. It is a little deviation, but yet it is required for sadhakas. Therefore, sannyasis, brahmanas, or Vedanta sadhakas, or unworldly people, vyavaharika Allah, they are not empirical people, non-worldly people. Worldly people means what? Who is prejudiced, commercial, political motive. He is vyavaharik. He is worldly people. Non-worldly means what? It doesn't do you all those things. Simple, straight and simple facts. Everybody is respectable, but simply go by facts. Don't go by rumors. Don't yield to anybody's manipulations. Uh, don't yield uh, manipulations of your intellect. Don't carry, th fill up your mind with prejudices, ideas and all commercial motives, political motives. Simply straight uh, talk about the facts. Okay? That person is really mature. We need such a person as a Vedantin. Not that you need extraordinary intelligent. You scored 90% marks in your engineering, doctor or any other thing. That's okay. That intelligence is okay. It's good. But what we need is this mind which doesn't yield to others' ideas. Others tell, listen. In spite of listening, you can set aside and look at the facts. But unconsciously, it starts conditioning it. Don't allow even unconscious conditioning, neither unconscious nor conscious. Even while you are listening, you should know how to keep it aside. Ah. You listen and remain, and yourself remain like a mirror. Mirror, even while reflecting, it remains untouched. A mirror, it is reflecting an object in front of you. Does it carry? Huh? Does the object stick to the surface of a mirror? It doesn't stick. Mirror remains untouched by it. Okay? Like that a mind should be like darpana. Darpana is uh, kannadi in Kannada. A mind which is like darpana is uttamadikari. is the greatest man on the earth. In India we call such person is a greatest man. Not your intelligence, not money and social status and all that. He may be innocent man, he may be child, he may be woman or he may be an uh, illiterate person. A mind which is unprejudiced, sincere, straight and open, ready to see the facts as they are. That is the greatest mind, worshipful mind, that is a devata manas. Okay, a godly mind. Therefore, Mahatma mind, Mahatma is such a person. Okay. Such person, that's why we call saintly people. In India, Mahatmas are of this type, not this kind of Christian saints. The saints are terrible rogues. <laughs> okay? They only talk of your Jesus and destroy all others and propagate hatred. Terrible hatred. Their whole books, their religion is filled up, filled up with these things alone, hatred alone. So that is not uh, Mahatma, that is not saintliness. They use the word saintliness too. As English word, they start using. We call them saint. Shankaracharya was a saint. Don't use the word saint. It is the most vulgar word, I tell you. Call him Mahatma. Call him Sanyasi. Call him Tyagi. Saint is a vulgar word because all the saints are rogues. <laughs> the English word saint means only rogues alone. They are never simple, straight people. Hmm? Therefore, use our Sanskrit word, our Indian word, ek Mahatma, ek Siddha Purusha. Uh, a simple hridaya. So, this is our one. They are not. They are not simple people. Therefore, this Vedanta requires an open mind, not a speculative mind. A mind which is prejudiced, a mind which is too much hastily imagining, becomes a speculative mind. It creates a theories, doesn't face facts. We need a mind which looks at the facts and doesn't imagine unnecessarily, nor carries the previous imagination, nor develops more and more imagination. It just sees the facts as they are. That's why we need a mind which looks at waking state, dream state, 
deep sleep state. Directly see. Deep sleep is everybody's anubhava. Directly see it. Unable to see require lot of maturity, lot of purity, unprejudiced without abhimana, just to see it as it is. Okay. So here, Vivaranakara, imagining, he made a rule against it. This will continue anyway, time is up. We will continue in the next class and we will again, the what Vivaranakara told, how it is wrong, and then how Siddhanti explains it, refutes it. This is a bit uh, a technical point but in a way it is useful also it is useful to sadhakas we will tell in the class next class okay om shanti 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 harihi om shri gurubhyo namaha harihi om tatsat om narayan